Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss a new topic that is hyperdontia. So what we are going to discuss in this session, we are going to discuss what is hyperdontia, what is mesiodense, we are going to discuss the terms such as paramolar and distromolar and supplemental tooth. We will also discuss the developmental disorders and syndromes that are associated with hyperdontia and at the end we will briefly dis discuss about the management of hyperdontia. So watch this lecture till the end and don't forget to give us your feedback in the comments. Let's begin. So in hyperdontia there are teeth in addition to those of the normal series. For example, in this picture, this is the clinical picture showing the maxillary and the mandibular teeth. And in between these two maxillary central incisors, there's an additional tooth. So this condition is known as hyperdontia, like there are additional teeth in addition to those of the normal series. So this is an extra tooth. So this is another picture showing the lateral side, showing the maxi maxillary and the mandibular dental arch from the lateral aspect. So this is the central incisor. This is the lateral incisor. This pointed tooth is a canine and this is an additional lateral incisor. So all these conditions, they are referred as hyperdontia. Another name for these additional teeth is known as the supernumerary teeth. So these teeth, they are also referred as supernumerary teeth. The supernumerary teeth, they are located at certain specific sites and they may be referred by specific terms, for example, mesiodense. So mesiodense is a supernumerary tooth that is present between the maxillary central incisors. This is the right, this is a clinical picture showing the maxillary and the mandibular teeth. So this is a right maxillary central incisor and this is a left maxillary central incisor. So in between these maxillary central incisors, there is a pointed tooth. So the crown, it is pointed and irregular in shape and this tooth is referred as mesiodense. So the root of this tooth, which is not visible definitely in this clinical picture, is also very short and conical. The mesiodense, it is the most common of among all supernumerary teeth. So you, can you, you may come across this tooth very frequently. Now the next term is the para and the distomolar. So the para and the distomolars, they are supernumerary small molars. For example, the paramolar, it is present alongside of the maxillary molars. Either they are buccally present or they are lingually present. But most of the time, in addition to first, second, and third molar, an additional molar is present, mostly on the buccal side. So this molar, if, a, if, a, if an additional molar is present on the buccal side or the lingual side, it is referred as paramolar. There's a term that is distromolar. And distromolar is an additional tooth that is usually located distal to the third molar. So it is present over here and it is present in this location. So sometimes the distal molars, they are erupted and sometimes they are only visible on the x-rays. So I, right now I do not have any clinical pictures of the paramolar and the distal molars. Um, I'll share those pictures soon as they are available. There's a term that is called supplemental tooth. The supplemental tooth, uh, they are more, the previous two teeth, the, the mesiodans and the para and the distromolar, they are not, they are not morphologically similar to the normal teeth. But the supplemental tooth is a, a supernumerary tooth which is morphologically similar to the normal series. That's why they are known as supplemental tooth. 
For example, in this clinical picture, showing you the lateral aspect of the dental arch, maxillary and the mandibular dental arch. This is the maxillary central incisor. This is the lateral incisor. This pointed tooth is the canine. So this is an additional lateral incisor. So this tooth is known as supplemental tooth. So it is similar, it has a similar outline, but slightly smaller in size as compared to the, the lateral incisor. So this tooth is a supplemental tooth. In hyperdontia, most commonly the maxillary dental arch, it is involved. So you most of the supranumerary uh, teeth you will see in the maxillary arch, and most commonly the supernumerary teeth, they are present in the permanent dentition. So it is very rare in the deciduous dentition. Um, in, so very rarely the deciduous dentition have additional teeth or supernumerary teeth. So the develop the hyperdontia, it can occur in absence of developmental disorders and syndromes. For example, mesial density occur in absence of uh, absence of disorders and syndromes but sometimes the hyperdontia it occurs in association with a developmental disorder or syndrome for example in cleft lip and palate patients there is hyperdontia in cleidocranial dysplasia the patients have multiple uh, had multiple supernumerary teeth some sometimes they are not erupted Gardner syndromes, they are unerupted uh, supernumerary teeth. Similarly, oculofacial car cardiodental syndrome and autodental syndrome, all of these syndromes and, and disorders, they are associated with hyperdontia. Now, what is the management of hyperdontia? The usual management is surgical extraction of the, of the supernumerary uh, tooth. And the teeth, they are surgically extracted as most of the time they interfere with the normal tooth position. Uh, Sometimes, as, as I mentioned, that the, the supernumerary teeth, they are unerupted. And in that case, uh, cyst, for example, dentigerous cyst can develop. And sometimes the supernumerary tooth, it causes resorption of the permanent uh, tooth. Uh, it causes absorption of the adjacent permanent teeth. So this is all about hyperdontia. Thank you very much for watching this lecture. Uh, please do give us your feedback in the comments below. Follow us on Instagram at dentaledu. Have for questions, images, and flashcards. Thank you so much and stay blessed.